I know I'm a little bit late talking about this spread of tweets online, but I wanted to watch Cosmic Fury a couple of times before forming my opinion on this spread. So this is from a couple of weeks ago when Cosmic Fury was airing, I think like the day after for me, like on the Saturday or the Friday night. And this is from Juki Collects, and if you don't know the story behind this thread, uh, there was a Twitter space going on uh, on Global Nerds, I believe, and Simon Bennett showed up and just started chatting with the fans and started answering a couple of questions. And I avoided this thread for a while because it did contain spoilers for Cosmic Fury, so I had heard most of the non-spoiler bits, um from people but then once I had watched the show I went back and revisited this spread so I'm going to go over this spread and sort of give my thoughts and opinions on this but what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to leave a link down below for the space um, it's an eight hour space so there's a, probably a lot of content to consume and a interview with Simon Bennett on the Global Nerds YouTube channel so I'll leave that in the description down below for you guys to check out. Uh, without any further ado, let's read this thread by Juki. They got whatever they could, so we'll go over it and we'll talk about it. So, let's go. Alright, so, Once and Always was originally a family slash comedy special. Hardsbro then wanted a more gritty show, legacy characters could not make it, and so the story was changed again. Ben Hasbro wanted to make it for families again. So that's an interesting first take because Once and Always was meant to be this wacky, goofy comedy special. And I believe Simon posted this on Instagram a while ago and one of the bad guys was meant to make everything go-go 90s or go-go 80s if they got hit by this beam. So it sounds like that Once and Always was going to sort of be this sort of uh, Marty Morphin... Uh, wacky 90s hijinks like the show used to be, very campy. But then they wanted to be more gritty and then a lot of uh, legacy characters dropped out or couldn't make it and then they had to change it again. So that kind of explains it with sort of like the tonal shift in Once Noise where it seems really dark and then, well it did maintain that dark gritty tone but then again it sort of remained that dark gritty tone while being for the older fans and for all ages. Uh, next one. So I guess this is once and always as well. Um, because the fight footage is con is time consuming, they wanted another two weeks for second unit. However, it was cut. So second unit was probably meant to pick up the extra fighting shots and stuff like that, but they weren't able to do it due to um, unable to sort scheduling. Simon also wished they had more time and money for uh, visual effects to work on the CGI Zord footage. Physical miniature sets would have been too expensive to use. Alright then. Uh, Cosmic Fury suit designs. Evil Ollie, Cosmic Fury, and UZ were made in-house as a collaboration between Toei, Hardsboro, and Something Brand people. Original designs had more texture and shapes. Simon has never heard of Plex until he saw the suit complaints online. The Plex bit confuses me. Like, the abs on the suit? No. That one baffles me. If someone could correct me on that one, uh, leave a comment down below. Now, this one's interesting as well. Helmets and Ryu soldier sabers were returned to Toei after making the molds. Everything else in-house was either returned to Hasbro or trashed. Oh, that's sad. A lot of those props were destroyed. Most suits were in good condition were returned to the States with Hasbro. Squid villain suits are still with Hasbro. So if those suits don't rot away, there's a possibility they can come back. Uh, Ghost Ranger helmet remained red due to scheduling reasons. It would have been problematic to change the colours in between scenes. There's only one of each helmet, one hero slash one stunt as well. So they had limited... Uh, costumes for the Ghost Ranger. Now this one is interesting and I thought about making a solo video on it and that still might come once I can script together like what to talk about. There was never going to be a Dark Ranger special. For permission, re for permission reasons the suit was not available at the time of Dino Charge so they wanted the use of a Cosmic Fury. 
Oh, so that's why they never had the Dark Ranger in there. Production does not read the comics, and there is no uh, Collins uh, solicitation between Boom and the TV show. All right, so that's interesting. So it sounds like Boom and uh, the TV show don't communicate at all, which is something we find out later down the line. Uh, Toei did not want to change the Dark Ranger helmet lines. All right. Um, the only time the comics were taken into consideration slash references slash reference, referenced was when they were designing the Morphin Masters. The comics are otherwise completely separate from the show. So it sounds like that Boom and the TV show don't communicate when it comes to sort of figuring out what they're doing on each other's end, if they've done anything or not. Um, okay, so the Zato conversation happened and they didn't write that down. I understand why. Uh, it was Hasbro decision not... Okay, this one I've heard... I'm going to be careful not to sort of dip my toes in this one. Um, it was a Hasbro decision to not make Zeta a White Ranger for Cosmic Fury because they were afraid of making it offensive. Internally, the Ghost Ranger would be considered a White Ranger by production. So it sounds like they didn't want to make the um, Zeta uh, because Russell Curry is black. They didn't want to make him a white ranger because that would have been offensive. So I'm not going to dive too much into that one. Uh, it's a weird Hasbro pick, um, but I'm sure there's both sides to the story. All right. Lord Zed making a Z that looks like an N on the mountain was an inside joke that Hasbro was concerned that the Zs on Lord Zed would look like Ns if he was sideways. All right. Okay. Oh, this one I've heard as well. Hasbro accused production of cultural appropriation for making Robo Reader look too Japanese. That's fascinating and that's weird as well. So, Hasbro accused production of cultural appropriation because they made Robo Reader look too Japanesey. So I'm guessing there were some Robo Reader designs that look like uh, Machiko Soga in the end, and they were like, no, don't do that. If that is the case, I wonder what those original designs look like. Um, David Fielding was never approached to reprise his role as Zordon for story purposes. Okay, um, I guess that's one of the spoiler ones. Okay, so the ones that are tagged with spoilers are tagged with spoilers. Um, which I've already seen the show at this point, and you've probably already seen the show at this point. Uh, the Cosmic Fury Rangers were always destinated as the same colours, pink, yellow, uh, so on. They were never considered. Okay, then. Uh, there was much more Fern and Izzy story in the 20 episodes version of Cosmic Fury. There was a plot point where Fern would break up with Izzy for being overprotective. That makes sense, because it looks like they were going that way... In those first half of the episodes where Fern kept jumping in the danger and Izzy wasn't a fan of it. And there was that one episode where they have the rock out episode and she gets into the Zord and Izzy sounded very disappointed. Like she was upset with her. And I wonder if that's when they wanted to sort of put that plot into play. But they couldn't do it. That's interesting. Uh, Fern was turned into a ranger because they thought it was really cool. Uh, Fern is the best. I agree. Fern was a fun character. Um, Hasbro wanted to maintain a dino theme for Cosmic Fury because it sells toys. So yeah, that makes sense. Dinosaurs sell toys, but that's funny because, you know, not many Cosmic Fury toys are out right now. Apart from the Morpher and the Zord, nothing else is out right now. There was never a draft using Lord Zed's Master Suit in a fight due to being too fragile. If there was, the suit design would have to be changed. That makes sense, because if you see how bulky that suit is in the final episode, it makes sense why they didn't want to use it in a fight, or why they didn't fight, because a lot of people were expecting some big final battle with that Zed suit. If you look at it, he could barely move in it. That's why he just stood totally still and only moved a little bit. Like, if he got into fights with that and they had to film that over and over again, that suit would have been very broken. Um... Con okay, this is where I was going to make another separate video on this. Continuity was essentially bed bent for Zed being tortured by Rita, despite this version of Zed not being married to Rita. I knew that. I freaking knew that. 
um, I had a feeling that was the case. Um, because that was my main gripes with the ending with um, Lord Zed at the end of Cosmic Fury, where he suddenly knows who Rita is, but they established when Lord Zed was first revived, he didn't even know that Rita, he was Lord Zed at his most evilest, so before he met Rita, or before he even, like, married Rita, so I don't know why they bent that rule, I guess just because, you know, cameo, Rita, um... Prop designs will go to Hasbro and then the brand team slash toy. In turn, they ask for modification. Okay. All right. So, okay. Prop designs will go to Hasbro and then to brand teams slash toy. In turn, they ask for modifications such as the lightning bolts on the brand from the brand team or toy asking for modifications. They'll make it easier for them to make as a toy. Okay. That's interesting. Ollie was chosen to be a villain due to his act of potentially having other com commitments. He had not been avail he had not been available. He could only be suited only sorry. Um Okay, let me reword this. Ollie had Ollie was chosen to be a villain due to his act of potentially having other commitments. Had he not been available, he would have been suited only in character and the actor would have provided ADR from the States. That makes sense, because I think Kai took the longest time to fly out between the rest of them, so then again, um, that's why, like, that's why Ollie turned evil, because you never knew if uh, Kai was going to be available to play the character, so that's why they probably turned him evil, and if they did have him transform, then he would have been in that suit the whole time. Uh, Kai Moya in sunglasses was a camera test and not an actual shot in the show. All right, okay then. And then they're talking about Fern's rake, slash back, back scratch, nothing trivia. Funny, I think it's talking about him. Okay. Uh, the combiner cannon wasn't designed to come apart from the outset. The formation sequence was rushed, outsourced by a third party, as the art department was already finished with production. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, this is interesting. Ninja was originally considered the comeback, but Mick was chosen instead. Mick has more fight footage but was cut. Oh, can you imagine if they brought back Ninja? And Ninja would make more sense because that's where the Shogun Zords came from. So Ninja would have been a great one to choose from. That sucks when they ever chose Ninja. Alright. Can you imagine if we got Ninja? That'd be great. Ion was a six ranger due to Sentai footage, but but however. Narratively, he's considered more of a standard member. The Six Ranger trope is not heavily considered when writing. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense, because Ion was given more of a spotlight with this. Um, the intro of the Morphin Masters was Chip Lin's idea, and then Hasbro approved it. However, by having all powerful beings, they realized this was... By... Okay. Um, however... By having all powerful beings, they realized this dismembers the previous ranger teams. This is why they were taken off the table at the start of Cosmic Fury. That makes sense because they are captured at the start of Cosmic Fury and having them, um, having them, uh, captured sort of like makes them sort of taken away in the in the equation with how powerful they are. So that's something I went over in my review and I praised because you had the Morphin Masters there and immediately they're taken away because you know what the stakes are. Uh, Becca Barnes is a fan of tentacles and cats, explains the squids based villains for Cosmic Fury. Alright. Let's see, what else can we get? I think this is the last one. Uh, is there more? There is more. Toei was clearing at their warehouse and sent a spreadsheet with photos of the monster suits they were throwing away to production. Production kindly took the offer for these suits. So that's why we see a lot of. Uh, Zooja and Pat Ranger, Pat Loop, Loopat suits and stuff like that, because Toei was throwing at the suits and they were like, "Hey, if you want them, take them." And then Hasbro took them. Um, they originally ca okay. My eyes are very squinty right now. Um, they wanted to keep the original suits for Heckle, Billy, and Mick since they are iconic to those characters. This factor was not giving them new Cosmic Fury powers. Alright, that makes sense, because those characters do have, um, iconic looks, so that makes sense, like, not changing them. Um, okay. Simon does not believe he would be able to get, f to give 13 ranger suits enough justice. If Lupat was adapted, it would have changed the colours, however, due to Black Lives Matter, 
uh, Black Lives Matter, Rangers as Criminals, and it's someone that were not adapted. Okay, I went over that like two years ago. Um, in-house, Cosmic Fury was Dino Fury free, Dino Fury season free, but Hasbro brand slash Netflix wanted to be Cosmic Fury for marketing reasons. That makes sense because we were all just calling it Cosmic Fury season free leading up to it. Uh, Ninja is the only character that changed during development. No other characters were considered. All right. Um, Min is, com okay, this one I can high five. Min is confirmed to be the Yellow Ranger in her cameo in Cosmic Fury. Once again, Cosmic Fury takes place after Once and Always. Alright, there it is. Um, okay. JJ and... JJ and who else? JJ and? JJ would have potentially been in Cosmic Fury written as Once and Always continuation. Mandates would want the two to be separate and keep the continuity to a minimum. Alright then, okay. So we could have got JJ in there. That would have been cool. Uh, let's see. I scroll down. There was a lesbian writer in the room that was a champion for Fern slash Izzy, basically. Production worked with Glad to help them guide them through Harvey's situation uh, because of the mandates. Characters were not able to show an upset and had to be and had to be an overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive message. That makes sense with how, like, the pep talks everyone got in that show. Uh, Simon would have have loved. Sorry, Simon would have loved a gay male, non-binary plus size. For t okay, Rangers. Uh, Fern slash Izzy feels like it's the first step moving forward. Having these characters. All right then. Cool. Thumbs up for that. Um, Simon noted that the Cosmic Fury writing team was essentially free people uh, writing African American slash Chinese characters. It's imperative to have writers who have lived these experience. That's cool. Thumbs up from me. Um, there was some stereotypes about Ion that did not sit well with fans, and so it was agreed there should be more diversity in the writing team. Okay. Uh, Hasbro was 100% supportive of the Fern slash Izzy re lesbian relationship. That's cool. Thumbs up from that. Um... Looking at Entwistle's work, Simon hope, is hopeful to see many new things for Power Rangers. Uh, let's see. Legion is asking why have more Rangers die? Sorry. Legion is asking why have more Rangers died than villains than the previous Dino Fury team? Meanwhile, other villains like Tarek, Santora are redeemed. Uh, mostly unserious question, trying to joke around. Okay. Um... <coughs> Um, ha production wanted Zato to be a new color since he wouldn't be assigned white because of Hasbro. Titanium was pitched. Hasbro said no. The champagne color was then pitched. Hasbro then approved and gave the name Zenith. All right. Um, production had to return the Void Knight suit to Toy for a stage show. He believes that then Toy. Okay. All right. So we could have got Void Knight. Um, production had to return the Void Knight suit to Toei for a stage show. He, he believes that when Toei returned the suit later, personal note, the scheduling here confuses me because I'm not sure when this happens. Uh, Simon's going on lunch in two minutes. Simon is going to stay around, okay. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, Simon's back. Um, Simon admits he should not have said he wasn't a fan. Okay, that's something that... I don't want to get into. Simon says he never go. Simon says never go to Ranger Port or Twitter if you want to produce a TV show like Power Rangers. Uh, si if someone invites Simon to PMC and can fund the ticket, he'll happily visit. That's cool. Simon left for lunch. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right then, okay then, so thank you Juki for having that thread. So that's some very interesting information there. A lot of behind the scenes uh, stuff when it comes to Power Rangers Cosmic Fury, but what do you guys think of all that? Because that's a lot to take in with all that information. So this video has been going on for 20 minutes. I think I'm going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace 